Episcopal priest Phil Doherty is dressed in his cassock and stole, about to perform a sacred ceremony. But it's not Sunday, and he's not inside his church. Blessed are you, Creator God, in all your creatures. It's the annual blessing of the animals on the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. We meet right at the farmer's market and uh, do our pet blessings there. We have friends that we have met over the years just from pet blessing. You know, they're not members of this church and they don't come to worship here, but uh, they've become very connected to this community because we care about their pets. Phil Doherty leads the congregation at St. John's Grace in Buffalo, where he serves as rector. We are a joyful congregation, so I think that reputation is getting around. The church sits on Colonial Circle at Olmsted Parkway in a section of Buffalo still elegant from the city's glory days at the turn of the 20th century. Buffalo's more recent fame has come from chicken wings, but there was a time when this city had more millionaires per capita than Manhattan, when it became the first city with electric streetlights. Those were the days of the Pan American Exposition, of which this grand building, now the museum of the Buffalo Erie County Historical Society, is all that remains. The exposition ended badly with the assassination of President William McKinley. The site is marked by this tiny memorial and the swearing in of Teddy Roosevelt as the youngest man ever to serve as president of the United States. That was then, this is now. As pastor, Phil Doherty must move forward. We have a lot of despair mentality, sort of a culture of uh, scarcity, and it really is a challenge. That despair stems from Buffalo's economic fortunes. Factories have closed, people moved away. Yet, as we walk through Buffalo's streets, Phil Doherty explained a kind of sweet irony. The drop in Buffalo's population has led to a new wave of migration that some believe is propelling the city back. That wave is made up of refugees, 40,000 since 1985. Uh, we now have an after-school program from School 45, which is the International Students' School. So we have children from all over the world coming to an after-school program. Young refugees who captured the imagination of the world were the lost boys of the Sudan, who walked several thousand miles to flee certain death during the Second Sudanese Civil War of the 1980s. Dominic Ding was seven years old when he left his family and village. I remember everything. I remember about how I suffered. I remember about seeing my brother dying. I remember about my colleagues dying because they were hungry. I remember animals attacking. Dominic Ding spent 14 years in refugee camps and eventually got to Buffalo via Syracuse and Des Moines. Ding now spends a lot of time at Buffalo's International School as an academic coach. My primary goal is to make sure that that child understands the school system here in Buffalo and to make sure also parents understand the needs of their children at school and the need of teachers also to communicate with the parents. In the same way that Buffalo's architecture reflects the greatness of the past, there is an almost communal memory of its days as the fourth largest port in the world, which inspires the churches to look outward to serve people far away. In what must be serendipity, I first learned about that in the summer of 2009, when we were in New Orleans in the Lower Ninth Ward and met up with a large, enthusiastic, and productive high school work team from, where else, Buffalo. So this is the Diocese of Western New York? Yes. All right, all right, we're here to watch your work. This house we've been doing mudding and sanding and uh, some cleanup. Once we got to Western New York, it became really clear that this kind of outreach is practically, as they say, in the DNA of this diocese. The church raised the money to build a steeple in when it, the church was first built, and they realized that the money would be better spent on the community, and Trinity still doesn't have a steeple, and it never will, because I think that there really is something in Western New York about giving. 
Catherine Gillespie is a member of the aforementioned Steeple Free Trinity Episcopal Church on Delaware Avenue and an organizer of the Trinity Medical Brigade that serves the people of El Salvador. Gillespie's husband, John, recruits his fellow cardiologists for the volunteer work. He and another cardiologist organized and set up a protocol for hypertensive people and we leave enough medication for about 140 to 150 people now. What we're trying to do is not just go in for a week and do something. What we're trying to do is have some long lasting. One chilly Saturday afternoon, we had the chance to attend an annual event, a high tea, at St. Paul's Harris Hill to raise $5,000 for another international outreach. Our Little Rose is, is a home for girls in Honduras, girls that have been abandoned, abused, left in the streets. Folks here know that the lives of young girls are changed for the better at Our Little Roses. And while that happens every day, sometimes the evidence is more dramatic, as in the story of this young woman, Jency. She's graduating this year, will be a dentist, and will be actually working with one of the ministries of Our Little Roses. Even scaled down, Buffalo is still the second biggest city in the state of New York. But just a little past the city limits, the atmosphere is quite different. The culture here is largely agricultural. We have beef farms and horse farms and, as you saw, corn and apples and um, a lot of hard pit fruits. As we walk through downtown Wilson, New York, Episcopal priest Judith Lee explained that the folks she serves are not immune to the economic difficulties of Buffalo. This community's largest private employer, Pfeiffer Foods, closed this salad dressing factory in 2009, leaving 150 people out of work. The day we visited, Dr. Lee was helping with her congregation's annual rummage sale. It's a way that we give to the community without setting ourselves apart from the community. It's a way which we both give out and invite in. Judith Lee became a priest after years as a college professor. She says serving a rural community on the shores of Lake Ontario has added to her own education. People have a much deeper understanding of the rhythms of life. They understand that your life is nurtured by just being able to watch what happens slowly. The Great Lakes are like many oceans and they define this region in many ways. Buffalo sits on Lake Erie, connected to Lake Ontario by the Niagara River. Above the river is the Peace Bridge, a link between the United States and Canada, but more than that. I have come to see our engagement with refugees as the bridge, if you will, into the heart of God. It is a new way of us even looking at what Christianity is all about. 